as the old saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. But it wouldn't hurt to learn how to block in this game. So, what better place to start than with the guard button? The guard button is your primary method of defense during a fight and is at the core of every other defensive tool in Soul Calibur. Guarding is performed by holding down the G button. Doing so will lock your character in place and they will take up a defensive stance. Simply holding down the G button will put you in a guarding state called stand guarding. While stand guarding you will guard against all highs, mids, special lows and special mids. But you'll be vulnerable to throws, unblockable attacks and of course low attacks. If you hold the guard button with a 2 input, this will put you into a crouching guard. While crouch guarding, you can still get hit with mid attacks, but you will be able to guard against both normal lows and special lows, as well as most special mids. As you can already guess by now, you are also crouching. That means you will avoid all high attacks and throw attempts. Minus the crouching throws. Guarding out of movement is also possible, but it is important to note that there will be a slight delay before your character can take up the guarding stance. This just means that after moving around, there will be a small window where you are still open to attacks before you can go into a guarding state. While the guard button is very powerful in this game, if all you're doing is just standing there like a stick in the mud, Eventually, you'll get your guard broken. This is called getting guard crushed. Mentioned briefly at the beginning of this guide, a guard crush occurs when a player runs out of guard stamina, otherwise more commonly referred to as the guard gauge. At the start of every match, your guard gauge will be set at 0%. As you begin to start guarding attacks, it will slowly put up towards 100%, resulting in a guard crush. While the guard gauge is not normally visible, you can visually tell when you're near the 70% mark when your life bar begins to flash yellow. If your life bar begins to aggressively flash red, it means you are on the verge of reaching the 100% limit and guarding any more subsequent attacks will result in you getting guard crushed. The player getting guard crushed will have their guard state completely broken opening them up to any follow-up attacks. Now, unlike your life bar, you can recover stamina for your guard gauge through various methods in the match. The best way is to not use the guard button for a little while and instead rely on movement to avoid attacks. While being a little risky, this will allow your guard gauge to naturally recover at its own pace. If you're after a more aggressive method, Simply moving forward and beginning a run animation will also help recover your guard gauge. Running forward does leave you open to attacks, but this is by far the fastest method. Regardless of the winner in the previous round, your guard gauge will also recover by a small amount before the next round starts. The last method is a little more character specific, some characters can recover some of the guard gauge by landing certain attacks or by performing their critical edge. It is important to note that once a guard crush has occurred, the player that got crushed will automatically have their guard gauge reset back to 0%. While every attack can affect the guard gauge once blocked, not every attack can initiate a guard crush. Usually quick or low damaging attacks like 5As or 2As will not cause a guard crush, but slower or high damaging attacks like 3Bs and A plus Bs will. Guarding is an absolute must in Soul Calibur. A lot of attacks do high amounts of damage, so if you're not guarding, um, well, let's just say you're not in for a good time.
Guarding in of itself is really easy to do as all you have to do is hold down a single button. As we discuss more about the other defensive techniques, you will start to see how everything will always revolve around the guard button. One of the defining features in the Soul Calibur series is the guard impact mechanic. Often shortened to GI for short, it is a defensive maneuver that can deflect your opponent's incoming attacks. Guard impacts are performed with 6 plus G, and when done correctly, a green spark will burst out as your character raises their weapon. If you input the command just as an opponent's attack is about to land, it will trigger a successful guard impact. This will knock your opponent back, rendering them momentarily defenseless, and also recover a bit of your guard gauge. The parry window for guard impacts activates almost immediately upon input, and it can deflect just about every kind of attack hitting your way. These include highs, mids, lows, throws, reversal edges, and even some critical edges. As you can see, depending on the attack getting deflected, it will cause your opponent to stagger back with different animations. I will go over these in more detail in the advanced section of this guide. Guard impacting does take a little bit of practice before it can be used effectively, as it will require you to have a good sense of timing and a solid read on when your opponent will attack. Missing a guard impact will leave you wide open to an attack as it has terrible recovery if unsuccessful. While a successful guard impact has the potential to recover some of your guard gauge, a missed guard impact will cause damage to it instead, bringing you that much closer to getting guard crushed. Mentioned previously in the basic offense section, guard impacts also get countered pretty severely with break attacks and the blocking wall attacks. While this may sound like a lot of negatives, Make no mistake, once mastered, guard impacts are perfect for turning the tables on your opponent. Sometimes all you need to do is to land that one miracle GI under pressure to shift the momentum back into your favour. A well-timed guard impact can easily stop your opponent's attack sequences and oftentimes open them up to a full combo. As you begin to explore the different characters, you'll notice some of their moves will have the green GI spark to them. These attacks are called Auto GIs, and as the name implies, they will have a small window where they will act as a guard impact before the attack animation comes out. Unlike a normal guard impact, regardless if the Auto GI misses or hits, it will not affect your guard gauge in any way. But, as a trade-off, most auto GIs can only deflect a specific type of attack. Auto GI attacks are all character specific, so details on what these attacks can deflect are all listed in their respective move lists. A new mechanic introduced in Season 2 is the Resist Impact, the big brother to guard impacts. Performed with 6B plus G, a resist impact or RI for short, shares the same animations as a normal guard impact, but instead of a green spark, now there is an orange one. Whereas the guard gauge recovery on a successful guard impact is barely noticeable, a resist impact recovers a massive 10 to 15%. And, as an added bonus, a missed resist impact will not suffer the damage penalty to your guard gauge. But what truly sets the resist impact apart is its ability to not only deflect both break attacks and unblockables, it can even stop the pushback from a soul charge. While resist impacts covers everything a normal guard impact can do and more, it also shares most of its weaknesses as well. A missed resist impact won't damage your guard gauge, but it now has a much bigger cost, 
requiring half of one soul gauge stock to perform. If you are in the soul charge state, it will instead drain your soul charge timer to perform. Resist impacts just like his counterpart, recovers terribly on a whiff. And, ironically enough, despite being able to deflect break attacks and unblockables, a missed resist impact can still be countered by them, resulting in you eating big damage. Resist impacts are, in all honesty, still very underutilized as a version 2.10. Despite these beefed up properties, like stopping unblockables and break attacks, if a resist impact were to deflect our normal attack, it will still give the same reward as a regular GI. And regardless of the resist impact being successful or not, it will still always drain 25% of your total soul gauge, making it not suitable for practical use. Oftentimes, you'll want to save your soul gauge for a soul charge, soul attack, or a critical edge. That being said, there are a few unique situations where a resist impact will come in handy, and the surprise of deflecting a break attack or unblockable will always catch an opponent off guard. The unique properties of the Resist Impact has given the Soul Calibur community some of its most hype moments in recent competitive play. Go! Gonna Soul Charge, get off me! I don't wanna have to deal with I this! Oh my god, yes. CRI! That is sick! That is new to this version! In Season 2, RI became a thing, and, and you remember, you can RI, you can RI anything, anything! Even the Soul Charge! Soul charge. Carrying on with the theme of parries, we have the Reversal Edge. Referred to as RE for short, it is performed with B plus G, and it is a new defensive move introduced in Soul Calibur 6. Combining both offense and defense into one, a reversal edge will charge your character's weapon, creating a white glow. During this charge, you will be able to deflect all incoming attacks, throw attempts, before unleashing an attack of your own. At a quick glance, Reversal Edges and Guard Impacts have quite a few overlapping qualities, but as always, there are a few key differences that separates the two, giving them their unique uses. Unlike a Guard Impact, where it can only deflect one attack on input, the time frame for deflecting attacks in the Reversal Edge varies greatly and is much more lenient. You will have full control of the parry window. When the attack at the end of the charge hits, it will initiate a slowdown, and then both players will enter a cinematic clash. During this period, players can input an attack or movement direction to determine the victor of the clash. The inputs available are A, horizontals, B, verticals, K kicks, forwards, backwards or side movement, and lastly the block button. It is at this point that reversal edges can get a little complicated for newcomers as there are now multiple outcomes and situations, but I will do my best to explain each one as thoroughly as possible. At its core, a reversal edge can be best described as having a rock paper scissors dynamic, with a few extra options. A beats K, K beats B, and B beats A. G inputs will make a character take up a defensive stance and will guard against all options, unless it interacts with a B input. As for the movement options, they will beat up one attack type but will lose to the other two. On paper, this makes them more riskier to use, but the reward for winning a clash with them is arguably better. 
the forward movement 6 will avoid all A's, the side movements 2 or 8 will avoid all B's, and the back movement 4 will avoid all K's. If you manage to dodge an attack, it will leave your opponent's defences wide open. If a movement input clashes with a guard or another movement, then no interaction will happen and the reversal clash will automatically end. Now if both players happen to tie with the same attack, or a G input clashes with a B input, then the reversal edge will enter a round 2 stage. Round 2 of the clash is when things start to get interesting. The reward for winning a clash now heavily skewers towards the initiating player, and all of the attack options will now result in a combo starting lethal hit. Along with these changes, some of the other input options will now interact differently in round 2 as well. If a G input were to interact with a B input, the player that used the guard will now get guard crush. And if two G inputs were to clash, then the initiator of the reversal edge will now perform guard impact. Should another tie were to occur in round 2, then the initiator of the reversal edge will automatically win. Do note that all movement options will still interact the same as they did during round 1 of the clash. All this information might sound a little overwhelming at first, but in practice, after a few matches, you will be able to remember all these interactions like the days in a week. So far, reversal edges sound like the far superior option over guard impacts, but underneath the fancy clash cinematics, there lies more than a few witnesses. Over reliance will lead to an early guard crush, as just the act of initiating a reversal edge will instantly deal 20% minimum to your guard gauge, with the charged up version dealing even more. While a fully charged up reversal edge cannot be stopped with a defensive impact, it is still slow, and except for a few specific characters, if you were to miss, there is no way to cancel out of the charge, making you an easy target. The reversal edge attack itself is also a vertical, meaning it can be avoided by sidestepping, and unless fully charged, it can be stopped by guard impacts, auto GI attacks, or another reversal edge. And just to rub salt into the wound, just like the other defensive options, a reversal edge will also lose to both break attacks and unblockables. So, after hearing all of this, why on earth would you still want to use a reversal edge? Well, to put it simply, a well-timed reversal edge helps take the guesswork out of guarding. Thanks to the large parry window, reversal edges are good against hyper-aggressive opponents and are at often times a popular move to help close out rounds. The fact that you can control the parry window will make punishing or avoiding a reversal edge very fiddly and unintuitive. And with the power to disrupt your opponent's attacks, a reversal edge is also by far the best method to help quickly build a meter for your soul gauge. The attacks available during the Reversal Edge are also character unique, so rewards can vary greatly from character to character. Some characters can get a slight buff for their other attacks. Others can get a stun leading to a free hit. And a few can even just straight up win you the round. Bring 
as you begin to play and explore, you will encounter many situations where you have to choose between using a garden pack or a reversal edge. These encounters will be explained in more depth during the advanced section of this guide. Just like how garden packs have auto GI attacks, there are certain attack strings that have a reversal edge mixed into them. The reversal edge for these strings acts the same as normal and follows the same rules as a regular reversal edge. Warrior spirits are forged below the never ending skies. Much like how professional boxers have to learn how to take a punch, learning how to get off the ground or waking up is imperative to any successful game plan. Arguably just as important as guarding, these wake up options are universal to every character in Soul Calibur, and knowing when to use the correct option will allow you to both recover safely and avoid any unnecessary damage. The wake up options available to you are a neutral rise, using an Ukemi or Tech Roll, rolling towards or away from your opponent, and attacking. Before diving into the details of each one, recognizing the different knockdown situations where you have to get off the ground will help you in choosing your wake up option. The most common situation is getting hit by a knockdown attack while you are on the ground or in the air. If you are knocked down this way, you will have access to all your wake up options. Getting thrown or hit by an attack with stun properties will also knock you to the ground. Do note that most of the time, you can still have access to all your wake up options, but there are still some throws or attacks that will disable your ability to tech roll. Getting launched is another common situation where you get hit by an attack that sends you flying into the air. You cannot tech roll after getting launched, unless your opponent hits you with an attack that spikes you to the ground. The last situation is when you are already on the ground and you happen to get hit again. This will reset all of your wake up options. What this means is that you will be able to ukimi or tech roll, even if you are put into a situation where it was disabled beforehand. Now, for your wake up options. A neutral rise is usually the safest way to getting up in Soul Calibur, it is performed by tapping or holding the G button while grounded or when you're getting hit by your opponent. Doing so will make your character get up as soon as possible into a standing guard. You can also use 2 plus G instead to recover into a crouching guard. Unlike the other wake up options on the list, there is no way to change your wake up timing with a neutral rise. This means that it will make it much easier for your opponent to force you into a mix up situation as you are getting up off the ground. A neutral rise also forces you to get up where you landed. While this can be good for some situations, it will not prevent you from getting hit by some follow-up attacks that could have been avoided by a tech roll. Tech rolling or ukimi by its core definition is the act of quickly getting back on your feet with a side roll. It is performed with any direction plus the G button and can only be used when you're about to make contact with the ground. You will know when you've performed an Ukemi successfully when you see a white shockwave around your character as they are getting up. In terms of a speedy wake up recovery, not much will beat an Ukemi. It is the fastest wake up option available, allowing you to avoid most follow up attacks that a neutral rise cannot. As an added bonus, it will also allow you to slightly change your stage position while getting up. Just be careful though, while using a Ukemi is fast, you are still vulnerable to lows and some mids. Each of the four Ukemi directions, front, the two sides, and back, also come out at different speeds with each one serving a unique purpose. The front Ukemi, 6 plus G as you are landing, has the fastest Ukemi speed, allowing you to act almost instantly at the cost of you recovering very close to your opponent. 
the side Kimmies with 2 plus G for the foreground and 8 plus G for the background as you are landing. It covers slower than a front Ukimi, but is usually the most used Ukimi direction. The side Ukimis are generally a good option to use, as it allows you to avoid most linear follow-up attacks while still recovering at a fairly safe distance from your opponent. However, side Ukimis are usually much more vulnerable to tech traps than the other two Ukimi directions. Common examples include getting relaunched by an opponent, or getting grabbed while you're waking up. Our back Ukemi, 4 plus G while you are landing, has the slowest Ukemi speed, but will help create distance between you and your opponent. This space could be the difference between guarding an attack, or making an attack miss, allowing you to punish with big damage. Rolling is the slowest wake up option, but you have the most flexibility when it comes to changing your wake up timing and stage position. While on the ground, you can roll once by tapping any direction, or for the side directions, you can link multiple rolls together by holding down the button. You can get up at any time by pushing the G button during a roll. Should you use a forward or back roll, you will automatically get up after it is completed. Along with the benefits of changing your position and wake up timing, rolling will also force your opponent to use really specific attacks to hit you while you're grounded. While you are still defenseless on the ground, unlike a neutral rise or ukemi, you can still move around without the risk of eating big damage. That being said, there will be some characters that will have attacks that can pick you up from a ground roll, but these attacks are generally slow, so they can be avoided by either a neutral rise or an ukemi. And the last option available to you is attacking. Knowing what position you are while on the ground will help determine what kind of attacks you will have access to. If you are face up with your face closer to your opponent, or face down with a heel closer to your opponent, then you are considered back turn, allowing you to use your back turn attacks while getting up, which can benefit some characters. For every other ground position, pushing an attack button will give you a front facing while rising attack. While you are getting up, you can also do all your directional attacks, critical edges, soul charge or soul attack, throws, and all your other defensive impacts and reversal edges. Some characters will also have attacks that they can only do while grounded. Now, just because you have been launched into the air, does not mean that you are entirely helpless. Unique to this series is a system called air control, where you can manipulate the direction your character will land while they are still in the air. You can usually tell when air controlling is possible when your character is flat in the air, and just like with movement on the ground, it is performed by holding down any other directions while you are airborne. Much like rolling on the ground, air control can also be used to influence your stage position while simultaneously forcing your opponent to use specific attacks to hit you. Air control can also be used to shift you away from the stage edge, saving you from a ring out. The only time you cannot perform an air control is when you get knocked into the air from the initial launcher attack, or you get hit by an air stun attack. Air stun attacks will put your character into a spinning state while airborne, disabling your ability to air control. As you can already guess, air control does have a strong influence over how combos work in Soul Calibur. All of this will be explained in more detail in the advanced section of this guide. Okay, time for some sparring. Is that any way to treat a lady? Battle one, fight! And with that, it wraps up both the basic offense and defense section of this guide. With this basic foundation laid out, you should now have a general idea of what each of these game mechanics can do in isolation. As we move on to the next section, 
I will begin to explain how each of these mechanics can interact with each other, and also help you come up with some basic strategies that you can apply to your gameplay. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This was just one of the many segments in my full Soul Calibur tutorial that covers everything from the bare basics to learning how to play with confidence. If you're interested in the rest, I highly recommend you check them out on their YouTube channel. Until then, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.